Yo, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to episode 5 of my Legend Plays series. Today I'm going to be talking about damage. This is not just a game of strategy and energy generation, it's literally a game of damage. So to win, you've got to knock out their Pokemon by delivering damage. And so today I'm going to talk about some strategies for doing that. And I've prepared, uh, I think, like four matches in this video that I want to go over. So before I jump in, shout out to the King, Smash King, 08 for the team comp. We've got Umbreon, DD, and Nidoqueen in Open Great League. Uh, some of these matches are from Season 10 when I was Legend Pushing, and um, some of them are from this interlude season after hitting rank 20. So with that said, let's jump in. Okay, uh, this one is from the Legend Push, and right away we see that even though I have this sped up at like 125% speed of its uh, normal speed at which it was played, we see I've got Q time. And uh, that's not uncommon when your ELO gets pretty close to that 3000 mark and you were trying to get a game. I was gonna back out and then we got a battle Okay, so we've got Umbreon into Registeel. Horrible lead, gonna, gonna insta-swap to DD here. And uh, that's because Umbreon really can't inflict fast move damage uh, in a fast and uh, heavy way to Registeel. And uh, Registeel is gonna be able to like deliver huge damage to Umbreon with a Focus Blast. Uh, whereas this swap to DD allowed um, not much damage, even with that, uh, that steel move to, be, to, be, to hit uh, DD. And um, we see they, they eventually swap their Metacham in. And um, I'm able to survive a lot of the counters that they're inflicting to the point that I built up a, a Thunderbolt and then two Psycho Boosts. And so we're, we're getting a lot of damage. I think they're going to shield this one. We're going to see. You know what? They may not. They might not. I mean, this is this is self debuff. Let's see. There. All right. So they get to their move. Yeah. It looks like they probably want to save shields for the Reggie if they can. Um, this would have actually been before the uh, before the Zap Cannon edition. So that's why this one still has the Flash Cannon move. All right. So I come back in Umbreon. I don't want to show all my cards quite yet. And then they're going to actually come in with their third, which, if I remember correctly, is Azumarill and I am right. So I insta-swap because I, I need to, um, again, I, I'm not able to inflict fast move damage with Umbreon here to really any of their Pokemon that are left. So I need to start building energy on the Queen. And notice I did not throw before that as you left and that's because I needed to build energy. I knew I'm gonna have to commit a shield when they throw that Ice Beam. And so I go for the new move and because that would have been game changing had they uh, had they let me hit them right away with an earth power, they shield it. I'm, I am gonna have to commit the shield at this point. And now I go for a bait because basically, if uh, even if one, if they're left with one shield, uh, one shield as you, it, it still can't really beat the rest of my team because of this poison. So I go for the bait and they do, they do go for it. And they do commit the shield, why? Because the, the earth power would KO, boom, there it goes. It would KO at that range. Also, Azu had just thrown, and so it was basically near empty um, of energy. And now you see me throw that Fang and then recycle. What was what was that called from my earlier episode? The uh, the outnumbered closer technique. So we see that wind condition recycled here in this match. All right. So again, I am commentating these battles sort of in terms of the lens of damage. Whereas in other episodes, it was in a, it was with a focus on a different a different lens, um, like energy generation or like a closer technique. All right, so yeah, Umbreon into Swampert in this match, and Swampert does outpace, um, but they they give up Switch, and so their A9 only gets to like maybe two uh, charms before I hard punish it with the Needle Queen. I immediately throw the Fang because, look at that, the A9 didn't even get to a move. 
That's exactly what we want here. We want to get that A9 out of here so that we don't have to shield. So fanging, getting that defense drop, and then continuing to jab, got it out of here. I'm gonna go for big damage on the Sableye because that really would be game changing and they know it would be too, so they shield. Um, I think they wanna hard farm me down here so they have enough energy probably to combat my Umbreon uh, with uh, return. So they're letting me get these fangs off. They keep going for the farm. I get to another fang. And here's where they have to decide, do they want to shield this or not? They know shield, but there's barely, there's barely any <laughs> Sableye left. It probably has enough energy to be at a return. Um, all right, so they've come back in with their Swampert. I can tank that, uh, that uh, first Hydro Cannon. I could have gone DD here, but the reason I went with Umbreon here is because Umbreon is already ready to inflict damage and there uh, there we got that last shield so I'll commit one shield and then I'll over farm and one foul play is enough if you know the damages one foul play is enough to KO at this range okay and then they come in here's where they're gonna go for the return um, this is gonna be a very hope-filled return but I know, I know the damages, I know shield, because I've got a rank one Umbreon, and I know it can tank that damage even if they throw it. And then if they had extra energy after that to try to get off a foul play, I could shield that. So it just wasn't gonna work there. All right, match three. We've got Dugong here. Now before this thing throws Icy Wind and debuffs my attack, I wanna get damage off. Um, sometimes this inspires people by outpace there. Sometimes they're inspired to shield the first. Um, instead, what we see here is they swap out. They take the damage uh, and then they swap out to Venusaur. And I know at a certain point I'll probably have to commit a shield, but I'm gonna. I know Umbreon can tank at least two Frenzy Plants, I believe, um, here, and and still not be like ridiculously low. So I get off like two foul plays on it in order to get their Venusaur pretty low. And then I'm gonna go in and just farm with Nidoqueen. I am gonna have to commit one shield on that second Frenzy Plant. And then this is a little bit dangerous because basically the, the Dugong is going to come in and have their Icy Wind loaded. And so I know I'm gonna have to commit my last shield, but I built up a huge amount of energy here that if I wanna go for a nuke move, I can. And it would still do, if I go for my nuke, it will still do quite a bit. I do go for my nuke. They are going to catch this on Alolan Raichu. This is debuff from an Icy Wind. Boom! Still KOs the Alolan Raichu. And now the Dugong's empty. I have three Pokemon still. The Dugong's empty. I get a Fang off. And if they do throw here, and they do. All right, so now I'm going to be down to two Pokemon left after this Icy Wind. But maybe they wanted to catch the, uh, so I'll be able to get this foul playoff and that's actually gonna KO because, why? Um, my attack has not been debuffed by any Icy Wind and their defense has been debuffed. Actually, no, it didn't KO, it got really close. And then we got one Punch Man, Deoxys, comes in and knocks it out with one counter. Um, okay, last match. You can see this is from the interlude season back when they had, uh, this was uh, not too long ago, they had Jungle Cup and Open Great League. Still a little bit of a queue time there. So Hidden Elo might have been high at that point. And here we go. Umbreon into, into Obstagoon. I'm predicting it's triple counter, um, especially when I see their swap. But the, again, Umbreon doesn't have fast move damage delivery to Obstagoon, but DD does. Um, they swap out, and now they actually shield to protect their own DD, which does make me wonder, okay, do they have double dark? Is it a Scrafty uh, as their third? Or even like a Vigoroth, is it triple counter? And if it is, I know that I can do um, a lot of shredding uh, and, and progressively more toxic damage with Nidoqueen. So they let me get that bolt off. 
and I just kind of want to pressure them. I didn't necessarily have to throw a big damage move here because I can get farm with uh, with Umbreon if I come back in. And then I do. Um, I can tank a lot of these counters and stuff. I mean, Umbreon's not the closer here, right? If this is if this is a triple counter team, Umbreon's not the closer. So he can he can soak damage and uh, build energy. And literally, we're just going to snarl down. They get, ooh, so them, that was really good because if I do have Needle Queen in the back and they have a Psycho Boost, then that's going to be trouble for me. But I have enough energy here to try to go for two last resorts. Let's see if I sur survive a cross chop. I think I do. Rank one Umbreon coming in clutch here, surviving the, the cross chop. It was non stab, but still, knowing the damage, knowing I didn't have to shield. Here comes my two shield Neo Queen. They don't get to a move. Goon is out of here. I'm predicting they come in back with DD here, but let's see what their third. Yeah, they come back in. They're gonna boost, and that would that would actually uh, potentially KO there. I mean, that that would do so much damage. Um, second one debuffed, not going to KO. Okay, because they're self debuff. Ooh, and to my surprise, they have their own Needle Queen. I'm gonna go ahead for the nuke because they're behind on energy and we have even shields. Whoa, big damage. They expected a, uh, a bait and um, they counted on that being their win condition. And just going for that nuke really helped because either way, it just sped up the match. Uh, but either way, that's what was coming, right? Um, had I baited, I think, and then and then they call it, that would be my, my lose condition, uh, potentially. And um, sometimes it's, you got to know when to go for uh, the bigger damage move. And so, like, we saw in match one against the Reggie, um, I had to consider the strategy of fast move damage. Uh, Umbreon wasn't it. And Umbreon really didn't have a, a fast move damage role against... Um, really any of the, the the three in that first match. Uh, not much damage done to Metacham from Snarl. Um, like practically nothing done to Registeel and Azu. Uh, so you saw me making some fast move uh, inspired switches there. And then you saw me uh, farming up a lot of energy on the Nido Queen because it had some nuke moves uh, that I would need for Registeel and then pressuring it uh, knowing knowing how to use this knowledge of damage and the knowledge that the opponent knows it too um, and that they are, are trapped into a, a locked clock uh, from their swap that's that's when you know you could bait uh, the uh, the poison thing there um, and, and so part of part of the damage dealing strategies is considering the fast moves uh, and what you'll need to actually put pressure on them either to progressively KO their Pokemon uh, or to, to potentially inspire them to swap and you start to see the rest of their team and you start to inform your decisions of okay who's going to be my closer here and how do I save shields for them if need be. Okay um, so there's a few different strategies so far with damage and then you you also saw that um, at times it was important to still go for the nuke uh, like the Raichu one-shotted the Nita Queen basically one-shotted. Uh, I mean, there was progressive damage with some poison fangs to the Nita Queen from mutual energy building, um, but one-shotted. Um, and that's that's where a lot of these moves can one-shot, and that damage matters. Um, and either way, we saw in that scenario because they only had one shield, and I had an energy lead. We saw in that scenario, it made sense to just go ahead and, and not bait. Uh, because the lose condition would have been that I um, faked a bigger damage move and uh, wasted my energy. Um, so we can see there, when we look at that through the lens of, of damage um, and energy uh, not going to a waste, when we have an energy lead, that's when we can make the decision. Uh, that turns out to be pretty good because if they didn't, if they didn't shield it, like they like they didn't, uh, it one shots. If they did shield it, then I just shield whatever they're going to throw. It doesn't matter. They're not going to outpace me to a second Earth Power. 
uh, and then I'm able to um, still get the, uh, the earth power off that I need um, and then basically still take the match home with, uh, with Nino Queen versus the Obstagoon in that last match. Um, so yeah, uh, what's the key sort of takeaway about uh, damage from this episode? Pair it, pair thinking about damage uh, with some of the other mechanics that you've learned, including uh, what you've, if you've been watching my episodes uh, of this series, including some of those techniques, like in, uh, I think it was match one, um, where we swapped to Umbreon on the Azu. It was just so low on HP, and um, I had basically a full health Umbreon there. So that's where, um, even though we were talking about the, the lens of damage, we also saw in that match, uh, an effective PvP mechanic there was the outnumbered close, where I intentionally swap instead of giving the Azu farm and uh, basically limit their ability to inflict the damage back uh, and set up an obstacle that they, they just aren't going to be able to get over to close that match. So again, damage is, is pretty important in this game. Um, it is not the sole thing. So if, if you're playing matches, just thinking like, um, oh, I'll just always bait because people are afraid of damage. Or, oh, I'll just always nuke because that will do the damage. Um, you can't play so absolutely. You've got to, of course, consider the damage, uh, but also consider the psychology of the opponent and the circumstance they're in um, and how they might find their own lose condition by either shielding or not shielding. Um, so by shielding, the example would be like the Registeel, um, not calling my Poison Fang Bait, Poison, <laughs> poison Fang Bait in uh, match one, and then uh, the not shielding part, the Needle Queen um, in the last match, match four, um, not calling the nuke move. Um, so again, damage is ultimately how we win, unless you, uh, unless you win by a timeout in some matches. Um, but you've got to, you've got to make it work with the other strategies, uh, that we've been talking about so far as well. Um, all right, guys, uh, I've got another, another episode about damage coming next. Um, I don't know if it's today's Wednesday, uh, when I'm actually making this video, uh, maybe Thursday or Friday, I'll make that video. It's actually going to be about soaking damage. Um, so this video has been about inflicting damage uh, and also how that relates to the opponent's decisions as well. Uh, but the next video is going to be about like when you're in a tough situation, how can you have a Pokemon who soaks damage in a way that's going to allow you to flip that match? So that's what's coming in the next episode. And again, I hope that uh, this is all useful. If so, please like, share, follow, comment. Uh, if you want to see topics, I had somebody contact me on Twitter and, uh, I said, yeah, you know, let me know if you're interested in, uh, in certain topics. And they said, we'll do open door for you all to, if you'd like to see me include certain topics, um, or even, uh, certain, certain teams that this team could play. Um, if, if that's your interest, let me know and I'll see what I can put together in the future. All right, guys, peace out.